Did Homo sapiens wipe out our closest ancient relatives, the Neanderthals? Neanderthals lived the life shrouded in mystery, like the combination of factors that led to their extinction. In this video, we'll explore their world, from their survival strategy to their daily lives, culture, tools, and debated relationship with Homo sapiens. Join us as we piece together their existence and answer the ultimate question. Did Homo sapiens play a role in their demise? Neanderthals were a type of ancient humans who lived a long time ago, starting around 200,000 years back during the Pleistocene Epoch. You might have heard of them being called cavemen because their fossils have been found in places like caves, which helped preserve their bones for anthropologists to find. The name Neanderthal comes from the Neander Valley in Germany, where their fossils were first discovered. They roamed across Eurasia from Europe to Central Asia. They lived during a really tough time, especially during the last ice age, when it was super cold. Imagine living in such a challenging environment for thousands of years. Despite the harsh conditions, Neanderthals were pretty skilled at surviving. They made tools out of stone, hunted animals for food, and even collected plants. For a long time, people thought Neanderthals were very different from us. But as anthropologists learn and uncover more about them, they have found that Neanderthals and modern humans actually have some physical and cultural similarities, despite living in a very different world. The first discovery of Neanderthal fossils was back in 1856 in a cave in Germany's Neander Valley. Lime workers stumbled across these ancient bones while quarrying and noticed that they were quite different from what they were used to seeing. These fossils had thick skulls, prominent brow ridges, and sturdy limb bones. At first, scientists thought they might be the oldest humans in Europe, but there was a lot of debate. Some suggested that they were just modern humans with unusual features due to diseases. However, more discoveries followed, especially in places like Belgium, Croatia, France, and Italy. These findings confirmed that what was found in Germany wasn't a one-time thing. Over 200 individuals' remains have been found in various locations, including adults and children. These Neanderthals lived a long time ago, anywhere from around 200,000 years to about 36,000 years ago. Some might have even survived up until around 30,000 years ago in certain areas. Their disappearance lines up with a period of intense cold and climate changes around 29,000 years ago. This was also around the time when early modern humans started spreading across Eurasia. So, where did they live? And what were their behavioral traits? Around 400,000 years ago, a group of early humans split into two populations in Africa. One stayed put, while the other moved to Europe. Over time, these groups evolved into separate species, with Homo sapiens in Africa and Homo neanderthalensis, Neanderthals, in Europe. Neanderthals faced harsh conditions during the Ice Age, but they adapted by becoming shorter, broader, and developing larger brains to cope with the cold. Despite the tough environment, Neanderthals thrived for thousands of years. They left behind a lot of evidence of their activities, including tools and artifacts. Scientists believe they lived in open settlements or caves where they would stay with their families, usually around 12 to 25 relatives. However, they weren't completely isolated. Studies suggest they interacted with neighboring groups, possibly for mating, making tools, and helping each other in tough times. If you'd like to learn more about our ancestors' daily lives and struggles, make sure to subscribe for more weekly videos on our primitive past. Neanderthals were quite adaptable and intelligent. They hunted different animals depending on the season, made and used various tools, and may have had basic forms of speech. Some evidence even suggests they engaged in symbolic behaviors like art, personal adornment, and ritual burial. Their social structure is still a bit mysterious, but genetic studies suggest they might have avoided inbreeding by seeking mates from neighboring groups. And while they cared for their sick and injured, there's also evidence of violence within their communities, 
suggesting complex social interactions similar to our own. Now, let's explore what Neanderthals ate and how they obtained their food. Neanderthals were big meat eaters, probably because plants were scarce in their chilly climate. Chemical analysis of their bones suggests meat was their main food, especially reindeer and red deer, though they also ate mammoths, boars, and other animals when available. They were quite the chefs too, using various methods like pounding, crushing, and cooking over fires to make their meals tastier. But debates swirl around whether Neanderthals had language. Some think their complex tools imply language use, while others aren't so sure. Studies show similarities in the brain areas for toolmaking and speech suggest they might have communicated with each other in some way. Although we can't say for sure, their auditory and speech abilities seem to have been similar to ours. Yet we know they expressed themselves in more than just words. They decorated caves with abstract designs and used paints and pigments. Neanderthals left their artistic mark on several caves, which show their capacity for symbolistic expression. A few notable examples include the Ardeles Cave, Neria Cave, La Pasiega Cave, El Castillo Cave, and Altamira Cave. All these caves are in Spain. Some of them in France include Cusac Cave, Chave Cave, as well as Grotte de Lascaux, Lascaux Cave. These caves contain stunning examples of Neanderthal art. They also adorned themselves with beads and shells, collected crystals and animal skulls, and even buried their dead, sometimes with flowers, like the findings in the Shani Dar cave in Iraq. These behaviors hint at a symbolic culture, showing they had more than just practical concerns. Neanderthals were pretty clever when it came to making tools. Their main tools were stone flakes, which they crafted by striking stones to create sharp edges. They used these flakes for various tasks, from hunting to preparing hides for clothing. Some were left as they were, while others were shaped into points, spears, scrapers, and more, showing a high level of skill and adaptability. So, could Neanderthals be more intelligent than humans? In the past, Neanderthals were seen as primitive and unintelligent, but recent research suggests otherwise. Anthropologists now believe they were highly intelligent, adaptable, and skilled toolmakers. They were capable of living in diverse environments and developing functional tools to survive. Neanderthal fossils reveal a tough life marked by pain and injury. Many adult skeletons show evidence of multiple fractures, indicating they engaged in risky activities like hunting large animals up close. Despite suffering from various ailments like pneumonia and malnutrition, they managed to survive, some living up to 45 years old. Evidence from archaeological sites, like the Shani Dar cave in Iraq, suggests Neanderthals cared for their injured and sick. In one case, based on a fossil from Shani Dar, a Neanderthal with severe injuries, including blindness and an amputated forearm, likely depended on help from others to survive well into his 40s. This discovery challenges previous views and suggests Neanderthals behave in ways we consider fundamentally human, showing compassion and cooperation. The fate of the Neanderthals is a topic of much debate among the scientific community. While it's commonly believed that Neanderthals were replaced by modern humans around 40,000 years ago, the archaeological record doesn't fully support this. Instead, a combination of factors likely contributed to their extinction. Small population sizes, diseases, harsh climates, and competition with modern humans all played a role. Climate change, combined with repeated population declines, may have been significant factors in Neanderthal extinction. Over thousands of years, fluctuating climates could have caused their populations to dwindle during the cold periods and rebound during warmer ones. This pattern of population decline and recovery may have weakened their resilience over time. As modern humans expanded into Europe, they likely encountered Neanderthals. Some believe they may have interbred, while others argue for more hostile interactions. Modern humans may have had advantages in technology, social organization, and population size, giving them an edge over Neanderthals. However, the exact nature of the interactions remains debated. 
genetic studies have provided insights into the relationship between Neanderthals and modern humans. While early research suggested they were separate species, recent findings show that Eurasians carry about 2% Neanderthal DNA. This suggests some level of interbreeding between the two groups, although the extent is still uncertain. Recent hypotheses suggest that climate instability leading up to the last glacial maxim could have contributed to Neanderthal extinction. Habitat degradation and fragmentation combined with climatic stress may have pushed Neanderthal populations to the brink. However, the role of climate change alone in their extinction is complex and debated. The extinction of Neanderthals was likely a multifaceted process involving a combination of factors such as climate change, competition with modern humans, and population dynamics. While they were intelligent and adaptable, they ultimately couldn't withstand the challenges they faced. Continued research and genetic studies are shedding more light on this enigmatic chapter of human history. What aspect of Neanderthal life do you find most fascinating? Their intelligence, tool-making skills, or social behaviors? Leave a comment and don't miss out on our other videos that dive into the lives of our early ancestors.